Hello everybody. Um, this is um, a difficult one to do. Um, this is a testimony about my teenage years and it's important now that I'm open and transparent about this. I think people, um, young people, are seriously um, un under threat by so many things. And I just feel by sharing this testimony um, about my teenage years, possibly it can help young people today. So it's about a drugs overdose, almost dying and seeing Jesus. So what happened? Let's get into the story. Well, I was about 17 years old, 17 and a half probably, I was going to art college at the time, which was my absolute passion. I was doing a foundation course. And of course, it was that first time out of school um, into the bigger, wider community. And I was swept away by being at art college with all the different people, all the environment was different. And of course, I was going to be a famous artist and I was going to marry Cat Stevens. I was 17. And my life with Jesus at that time was just the knowledge of God in some respect, but absolutely no church, nothing. So how I want to start this is by saying that um, I've sort of given you the, the basics of it, the outline of it, but let's go into the nitty gritty now. So it was a Sunday, I was at home, and I managed to score some hash. Um, this is this grass or something, I don't know. Anyway, the, I'd bought it in a pub and um, I'd been experimenting a little bit with other friends at art college, smoking a little bit at parties. And this was one of the first times that I've actually scored myself. I thought, oh, that'd be good, as you do in your 17 year old self. And I was at home, I was bored, it was a Sunday, my parents were downstairs and I thought I had no friends to go out to play with. And I thought, mm, I'm bored, what am I going to do? So, right, let's make a cookie. So what I did, first of all, was actually thought, well, I can't make a cookie, mum would know. And I can't smoke it because mum would know about the smoke. So I thought, how am I going to, oh, I could eat it. Let's make a little sandwich. So I went downstairs, made a cheese sandwich and put all this hash in it and then ate it. And then I thought about 20 minutes after, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Maybe I need to have some more. So I put the rest of it in a sandwich and ate that as well. And then I thought, well, still nothing's happening. And, um, oh, let's phone some friends. So I phoned up the guy that I scored this from and he said, um, maybe lay down and listen to some music. And I said, well, I've eaten it all in a sandwich. And he said, all of it? And I said, yeah, I've eaten it all in a sandwich. And um, that gave me a little bit of an alarm bell, I think, because he said, all of it? And um, anyway, so there we go. So anyway, so I was in the bathroom, and this is probably about an hour or maybe an hour after, um, eating the final piece of hash, maybe half an hour. I lost track of time. And um, I suddenly was in the bathroom and um, I washed my teeth and I just thought, well, you know, I just, you know, do the normal things. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, then I suddenly, all the walls started sort of like going, um, fading away. And I thought, oh, this is a bit strange. What's happening? Um, so all the walls of my bathroom were sort of like trickling with water and it was just, you know, really, really um, unusual. Uh, space was altering for me. The carpet in the bathroom started picking up and flowing away and waving around like a magic carpet. And I was having all these visual effects. I thought, oh, yeah, this is a bit trippy. And then all of a sudden I thought, actually, this is getting more serious because I suddenly went into a complete convulsion. Um, he said go down and lay, uh, lay down and listen to some music so I sort of went into my bedroom turned the music on 
drew the curtains and, and that was basically it really I was completely gone um, my heart was beating so fast I was convulsing in the bed um, I was shaking I, I thought I'd try and make myself sick I couldn't move literally I could not move my body was so in such a state of shock I couldn't move off the bed I think I fell off the bed I can't really remember fully but I just thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? 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 And, um, you know, it was just getting worse and worse. I was just, I had no sense of my body. The floor was caving in, the walls were caving in. Um, and this tremendous sense of um, guilt, this tremendous sense of anxiety and um, threat. And all I kept thinking was that mum and dad downstairs um, what are they going to do when they find me dead in my bed? And I just thought, this is the worst. You know, I love my parents and they're going to just find me dead in my bed because I'm going to have a heart attack. My heart was pounding out of my body. It was just pounding so fast. And I don't know how long this went on for. It seemed like an eternity. Um, I, I really don't know how long it went on for. Um, but what I then did, what happened then, was this was this was the marvelous, wonderful love of Jesus, because I I had no sense of what to do. I'd done everything I thought I could possibly do to save myself, and then I prayed, Jesus, Jesus, save me! I am sorry. I am so stupid. I am so foolish. What have I done? what have I done? And I just felt like I was just about to die. And then, and then I had the presence of Jesus fall on me. It was amazing. It was like light. It was like, it was just like love, complete love. But also it was the figure of Jesus. Somehow my mind has had seen or conjured up the presence and the actual figure of Jesus um, and he said he just emanated love to me he he didn't physically speak but he said you know you're so silly you know you are so foolish you are so such a child and and he said I understand you know he understood he understood everything and, and my, you know, my stupidity and my stupidness. But over all that, his love, his love and his presence was overwhelming. And I just felt that he just calmed me and he saved me and he quietened my soul. And, and I don't know how many hours it was, how many hours I spent in that, that state of being healed but the visualization of everything else stopped he brought the calm to the storm in my in my mind in my consciousness i didn't die i didn't feel very well but i didn't die and the next day i don't think i slept i know it went dark and i knew it went light again there didn't seem to be any sleep. It seemed to be a continuous process. But the next day I woke up from this dreadful experience. I realized and memorized and remembered very clearly, I won't do that again, God. I'm very, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for my parents not finding me dead in the bed. Thank you, thank you, Lord. And from that day, I decided, I already had an idea that I was going to be an art teacher and devote my life to giving, to be able to give. Because Jesus spoke and said, you know, your life is precious. You have a precious life. You have a lot to give. Don't just waste it. So that's my story. Um, I need at this age to be very transparent and, this, and, and give everything in love. And I give you this story with love and in the prayers that this can help a young person, 
Um, and if you are in any situation or any shape at all which you think that speaking to me and having me pray for you can help you in any way, in any situation that you're experiencing, then please drop me an email, um, message me. I would be absolutely welcome hearing from you. Blessings. Bye for now.